Uh, 34, Your Honor, um, is just our request to make an offer of proof. Uh, the court previously dealt with, obviously, the 404B motions that we brought relevant to the May of 2019 arrest of Mr. Floyd. Um, the court, in its order, it issued um, sort of a summary order and had indicated that a memorandum would be filed by the court stating the reasons why certain 404Bs were admitted and others were rejected. We've just not received that order. What I expect, however, Your Honor, is, is that um, there has been um, significant developments in this regard, at least with respect to the defense perspective, um, that we would like to supplement our record, ultimately ask for reconsideration of based upon that new information that was not available at the time that we brought that motion. All right. Why don't you go ahead and do that now? Sure. Um, so, Your Honor, and again, I'm, I'm simply, um, I am speculating as to the court's rationale as to why uh, the previous arrest of Mr. Floyd was denied. However, I am, I am, my speculation is that the court considered our analysis, to, our, our statement of facts to be somewhat speculative as to whether or not Mr. Floyd had drugs in his mouth at the time of his arrest. Um, since, uh, the court, since the court issued its order, um, the defense discovered uh, and went and inspected Squad 320 of the Minneapolis Police Department. Um, in reviewing photographs of Squad 320, there appeared to be white substances throughout the back seat of the squad car. Uh, so myself and some of the other defendants' attorneys and our investigators went to inspect Squad 320. Uh, it was very apparent that what was in Squad 320 was controlled substances. The state of Minnesota um, then subsequently uh, had those substances taken out of the squad car and tested. Uh, they are, in fact, methamphetamine and fentanyl, and they contain the DNA of George Floyd. Um, so they are chewed, partially chewed up uh, pills. In addition, Your Honor, the additional evidence that was discovered, uh, the state executed a second, uh, second search warrant on the Mercedes Benz that was being driven by Mr. Floyd and located in the center council of those of the Mercedes Benz were two pills that were identical to the two pills that or appeared to be identical to the pills that were in Squad 320. Those pills were analyzed, and those pills also contained methamphetamine and fentanyl. So ultimately, if we look at this particular incident, in what the state argued was speculative, that our screenshots that we had submitted to the court in connection with that, that 404B, um, was it gum, was it something else, was it drugs? I think the question has been answered that we now know for a fact that there were drugs that were in the car. We know that there were drugs in the squad car that contained Mr. Floyd's DNA, and that those drugs in both of those cars were identical to the drugs that were in Mr. Floyd's system at the time of autopsy. So in that regard, Your Honor, if we liken it and we go back to what happened in May of 2019, when Mr. Floyd was pulled over, put a large amount of drugs in his mouth. Uh, he was taken into a squad car. He was then ultimately hospitalized, where he had to be physically restrained by hospital staff. And so it would be our intention to provide the court with all of those additional records, just simply as a supplemental offer of proof in that regard. And you can make that offer of proof by filing those. But the question I have for you and this is so you don't have to speculate as the court's ruling. What 404B exception does all this go to? What does it establish that is an element of the crime here? Well, it, it establishes a modus operandi, essentially, of Mr. Floyd, and that and when Mr. Floyd is apprehended, or at least in one prior incident, when he was arrested by the Minneapolis Police Department, he did the exact same thing that he did here. And when we get into the question of his cause of death, um, is he actively ingesting narcotics that would potentially cause his death? Well, does it really 
go to that though, and I'm, and I'm asking this, uh, you know the file better. It could have been, I don't think the state's uh, contesting the fact that fentanyl and methamphetamine were found in Mr. Floyd's blood after his death. Is that correct, Mr. Frank? And the, the amounts, I think, are what Dr. Baker is going to talk about. Why does it matter that he took it in response to police action, that is the police coming up to his car, versus maybe 15 minutes before or an hour before? Sure. The bottom line is they're drugs, they're in his system, unless he's claiming, unless you're claiming uh, or the state's claiming that someone uh, so involuntarily you, intoxicated him by, by essentially forcing drugs on. It just I, I don't see how it establishes. Because your honor, and, and perhaps this is the missing component, because ultimately what is being said a lot about this particular case is, is that the Minneapolis police overreacted to a twenty dollar counterfeit bill. But what people in our line of work, whether it be the court, the defense, police, the state. We understand that these are fluid situations that often evolve. Maybe an initial very minor, minor report, but when the police go to intervene and suddenly you learn that there are drugs in the car or guns in the car, I'm not suggesting there were guns in the car here, because there weren't. I'm just using this as a general example. Or there are warrants for someone's arrest. Um, you, you, these are evolving situations that call into question the amount of force that police are authorized to use. And so it, it's, a, it's a lot different if you're, trying to, um, if you're trying to conceal or secrete controlled substances than it is you know, a $20 bill. This isn't just a $20 bill. And it, it ultimately goes to the very nature of the police response. Well, and as I understood it at our September motion hearing, there is not an assertion by the defense that Mr. Chauvin knew or had arrested Mr. Floyd on, as part of that May 16th, 2019 incident. Correct. Um, but and but if, you, if you look at, if you look at the 2019 response, right? The Minneapolis police pull him over. He, the officer draws his firearm immediately because Mr. Floyd is not showing his hands. And I know that in this particular case, Officer Lane did that exact same thing. It goes to the measure of the police response to that particular situation. So if, if we're going to come in here and we're going to have experts from Los Angeles and Montana and wherever else they're coming in from to say, this was an unauthorized use of force. And you have a prior incident where officers used an identical use of force in an almost identical situation, uh, that's where it becomes relevant. Well, you can make your offer proof. We can revisit it later, but uh, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not convinced. I could see where that evidence might be proper if you had said Mr. Chauvin was part of that arrest or knew about that arrest, and therefore when he uh, had the contact with uh, Mr. Floyd that resulted in his death, I could see where it'd be like, oh, this is what he does. I have knowledge that this is how George Floyd reacts to police interaction. But it doesn't establish that because Mr. Chauvin wasn't a part of that arrest. Understood, Your Honor. It's more of a generic, let's pick a, a situation because we have a body-worn camera and Mr. Floyd on it. There could be other body-worn cameras that show that that's not how the police react to it. So I guess I'm telling you right now, I'm not convinced yet uh, to reverse my ruling, but I'll consider whatever you have as far as written offer proof. Thank you, Judge. All right.